Hey everyone, it's Mrs. Smith, and I am back to talk to you about a famous Disney animator by the name of Mary Blair, and she was very popular in the 60s, and that was very unheard of for a female artist at the time. So I was all over this, and I absolutely love her art. I'm a Disney fan, but I'm not a Disney fanatic. Okay, so I do have some Disney stuff. Uh, I don't have Disney Plus, but um, I've never seen Frozen either but um, I do enjoy Disneyland and a lot of the art and I really appreciate it. So Mary Blair was born in 1911 and she was born in Oklahoma. She eventually moved to California and attended a art school in Los Angeles and graduated and then went on to do some of her own work and then eventually went on to join the Disney team. She was married to a gentleman um, that also was an artist and he was on the Disney team as well. So unfortunately during her career, there was a lot of times where she was um, in the shadow of her husband, but her work is actually a lot more well known. Um, for some of you, her most famous piece, will probably you will recognize, would be the It's a Small World ride attraction that is at Disneyland. So it's the design of all of that. So we're going to talk about her work in general and the color schemes and how she worked and uh, we're going to mimic a castle we're going to do our own version of a mary blair style castle and i'm going to go over all the items that i want you to keep in mind when doing your work i want to show you some of mary blair's work because she's really known for her use of color and we're going to go over some items with the color wheel and things i want you to think about when you're creating your art so let's take a look. This is actually a still from a Disney short that was called The Little House. And I'm going to send you a link to it and I want you to watch it. It's a really cute little video from 1952. So um, it's a kind of sad a little bit, but it has a little happy ending to it. And I want you to notice the use of colors in it and everything that was done. Um, she was very well known for her work on uh, Cinderella, and Peter Pan and I've got some little stills here of Alice in Wonderland as well so that you can see the color schemes. I'm going to come back to this one because it's really important. Here are some other ones you can see the stylized use of her work with the leaves and the trees and the little uh, motifs in there. Another one here from Peter Pan. Again notice these colors. I'm going to come back to this when we take a look at our color wheel. This is also from Peter Pan with these little mermaids in there. And then here's a couple of Alice in Wonderland and Cinderella at the bottom. So what I want you to do is you're going to have your handout for this. You've got a two-page handout that came with this project and there's a little color wheel there. So let's take a look. I made it bigger so you can all see the color wheel here. Here's the color wheel. All right. Just a couple things I want you to note about the color wheel. When you are working with this, the colors that are next to each other that fall along the same area here are called analogous colors, okay? They are very close together, so anything over in here and any three or four colors that are together are going to be called analogous colors, all right? Colors that are opposite of each other are going to be called complementary colors. So they are gonna have the most pop, okay? They're gonna be the most contrasting looking. So think of superhero colors, um, how you want them to pop and they're gonna stand out. They're gonna be almost opposite or, you know, blues and orange is opposite. So yellow is close to that. So you can think of, you know, maybe Superman. Um, and then think of other ones that you can relate to that pop like that. The other ones that are close together like this, they have a more soothing effect on you. They're going to make you slow down your heart rate a little bit and just act more, you know, soothing and peaceful towards it. So let's take a look again at a couple of these pieces. Look at this Alice in Wonderland piece. Everything in the background, these little areas here and here and here, they are all using analogous colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. But then in the foreground, they've chosen opposite colors to make it pop. Okay, so you can really see how effective that is. This is also analogous colors that are next to each other, very soothing at night, very dreamlike. Okay, the other color scheme that you can do is called uh, monochromatic. 
And that is gonna be when you take one hue, okay, which is a color, you're gonna take one of these and you're gonna add white, gray, and black just to that one color, not all at the same time, okay? So if I add white to red, it's going to make it pink. And I can do lots of different um, quantities of white to that. So I can do a large amount, which is gonna make it really light pink, or just do a little bit, which will be a much darker pink. So all of those colors in and between will be on a monochromatic picture. So that is something you can do as well on your piece. Okay, so we're gonna take another look at the It's a Small World ride. Um, this is a two-dimensional sketch, and again, her two-dimensional drawings were now created three-dimensional, and how exciting would that be? So what she did was, you know, the ride, if you haven't been on it, it goes through all the different countries and it celebrates all the different nations and countries and it's really beautiful and fun and uplifting. So when you look at the piece, you'll see images in there that are architectural of every country. Okay, so you might see like little Japanese pagodas. You might see the top of Taj Mahal in India. You might see something that looks like a Russian cathedral and, and so forth and so on all the way throughout that. So when you design your castle, I want you to look on this page here. This has all the directions. You're gonna be going through and you're gonna design your own castle. You see how they fill up the entire page? All right, take a look at that. And then you're gonna come up with your own color scheme. So this gets back to the color wheel and everything that we talked about on picking your color scheme. All right, do you wanna go with the complementary colors? Do you wanna go with analogous colors? Do you wanna do monochromatic? Or do you wanna do primary colors or have it be an explosion of all colors? And you do wanna do your background as well. So think about what would make your castle pop. The background isn't what's, what you want everybody to see, right? You want everybody to see the castle. So what's gonna make that castle pop and stand out? And I want you to add all those little elements. It could be flowers and clocks and it could be little Dutch shoes or whatever you want, but make it have an international feel to it. Hey everyone, let's go over all the supplies we need for this project. As usual, always have your handout with you. This has samples on it and it also has the directions so that you'll get a better grade, right? Follow those directions on the second page. And if you have any questions, as usual, message me. You will also need your spiral bound notebook that has the plain paper in it so that you can do your rough draft on to submit it to me for approval, all right? Pencil and eraser, always draw lightly so it's easy to erase. And for this project, if you have a ruler, great. You can use that, if not a straight edge or just draw your best. And then the final paper for this is actually watercolor paper. So this is the paper in your packet that will have a little bit of thickness to it and a texture. That texture is actually called the tooth of a paper. And that thickness and texture is gonna be the watercolor paper that's in your packet. And you will also have your watercolor set and your brush. So that's everything you'll need to get started and to complete this project. The next portion of this video is going to go over some tips and techniques on how to produce your best watercolor piece. So thanks a lot. Talk to you soon. Okay, the first thing I need to do is come up with my rough draft, right? So if you're not sure where to get started at all on making your Mary Blair castle, remember, take a look at your handouts over here and take a look at some of the geometric shapes that are in there. And then you have all the handouts on this one as well that has some really good ideas in here. So first of all, if you have a ruler, it might come in handy for the rough draft. You might just want to go through and just start making a few columns, all right, that are different lengths, all right? Make this one be a little bit taller, perhaps, and then definitely overlap. So get one that goes in the middle of those two buildings that you just drew there. And then keep going, just get this going bigger and bigger. Maybe I'm just gonna do half of the ruler and the other half over here to make that be much bigger space. And again, get those things overlapped as far as your buildings go. Real tall, some of them really narrow. All right, once I've done all of that, 
now I'm going to get another one at a different height. Okay, so now I have all my rectangles on there. Now I can go in and divide it up this way if I want to horizontally and get some different sections in there. All right, so I might want to do that up here. Just do a few to get started, right? There we go. Now, the next important thing is I'm going to go in on my pieces that overlapped. I'm going to erase the lines that need to be erased so that you can definitely get that overlap feel. And then I can go in and start making the tops of each of these different. I might want to put a dome on one of them. I might want to do something that looks more like a uh, Taj Mahal look to it over here. Okay, I can do a triangle over here. All right, and I'm just going to keep going and adding different tops to it. I can make this one actually look like a castle with smaller boxes on top. And then as you can see in all of the designs that she does, there could be a line going this way and this way. And then you can add those little scalloped lines like this. They look like smiley faces. You can do zigzags, triangles, stripes. And then within these designs, or these spaces, you can do some of the other designs. If you want to just make it look like it has an Arizona flair to it, and you want to do that sun that goes all the way around, then you can do that. So this is the basics of getting started, and then try to get that international look to it with the tops of different things. Remember, you can go ahead and do a Japanese pagoda. You could do... Um, some things, like I said, that has more of a Middle Eastern look to it. Get the little tulips in there. Do a windmill at the top of this if you want to. So you can get that drawn out with the, the windmill. And your windmill can look like a flower if you want. It doesn't have to look like a standard. But just get some different designs in there. So that should be enough to get you started on your rough draft. All right, I put my final design onto the good watercolor paper, and I think I have a good international feel to it. I've covered quite a few countries and nations. I have a Middle Eastern look in here, the Holland, US, I made the tops look like firecrackers. I have the Leaning Tower and a gondola, Africa and Polynesia, Greenland and Iceland. We've got the UK over here, Asia with the pagoda and the gar Japanese gardens. So I think we're covered pretty good. Before I start painting, I am going to erase my pencil lines very light so that they're a very light look to it. But I do want you to notice the amount of detail that's in here. All the little designs that are like flowers and stripes and leaves, everything that's in here. This is the amount of detail that I'm looking for in your picture. So let's go ahead and erase and then we'll get started with some painting techniques. This is Emmy, by the way. Hi, Emmy. This is Orca. Orca, say hi. Say hello. Good boy. Okay, I wanna show you a few tips as you start to paint. Make sure you have some napkins with you because you will need those. And my suggestion is to paint one section at a time and go slowly. And you might wanna do everything that might be blue first, and then you might wanna do the next color. Or if you're in a certain area, just paint it and let it dry. If I don't let a color dry, I'm gonna show you what happens here. Let's just say I paint red over here, and I have a circle area that I've painted red, and I wanna keep it in that circle. All right, so maybe that's part of my painting. And then I get some blue, and I'm gonna paint right next to it. I want you to see what's happening here. This is called bleeding. It's gonna bleed all in there. All right, so it has a tie-dye look to it. It's kind of cool, but you might not want it for this effect. So it's best when you're painting then if you're going to do a section and then let it dry. So I'm actually going in and I'm doing my um, blue windmill right now. So I'm going in and what I'm doing is just lightly outlining it first with my smaller brush. And if it's a little too dark, I just put a little extra water on my brush and then I go in and fill it. If you don't wanna see any lines, you just kinda of do this little scrubbing motion that I'm doing here that you can see. 
back and forth scrubbing and then it kind of like will bleed out a little bit so that you can get that filled in. All right, so if you wanna make it darker afterwards, you can go back in and also make it look a little bit darker in there as well. Give it a little bit of depth if you want to. All right. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna to go to my next color. So remember I said that I was gonna keep these in the same family. So I might choose my purple now so that I can keep going in that direction. And then I'm gonna paint this flag at the top purple. So I'm gonna get my purple on my brush, outline it first, and then go in and color it in. All right, so I'm gonna keep going one little section at a time. And remember, let it dry first. I finished painting my picture and now I'm going to go in to make my background black. And remember, I said you could use your Sharpie. So what I'm going to do is go in and carefully outline everything first. Once I outline just the outer edge, of everything where it would be black. Outline first, and then I can go in and color it solid. Okay, take your time doing this. You don't wanna rush this. I'm gonna go in and get my whole background black, and then I'll be done. All right, I just finished filling in everything with my Sharpie and I can say that my project is complete. Don't forget to sign your work and I can't wait to see what you've created.